Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden. We're going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital, and we're returning to a brewery you've seen me review a good number of beers from before. Um, and this one is kind of part, it's part two in a sort of mini-series, if you like. This is one of a three-part um, beer series, if you like, that they released in April 2020 through the local and Smoskollit assortments. So, for this review then, we are going to go back to Stigbjergsbreggery for my third review from them this month, and we're going to have a look at the Queen of Hops, which is an IPA coming in at 7% ABV. This one is part of the kind of cards mini-series that they did. I don't know exactly what I should be calling it, but there was the Jack of Hops, the Queen of Hops, and the King of Hops. You've already seen we review the Jack, which was an IP, I think, at 6.8%. This one comes in at 7%, and then you've got the King of Hops, which I think is like 82 or something, if I remember correctly. But very curious to see how this one turns out. The Jack of Hops was a very nice, really drinkable IPA that really reminded me, actually, of um, Julius from Treehouse over in uh, America, actually, although it did have a few elements of the farmhousey things you expect from... Uh, you know, from the likes of Heady Topper and stuff like that at The Alchemist, and there was a few little wheaty things that are more along the lines of Trillium as well. So, very curious to see how this one turns out. Always nice to review new IPAs from Steve Barrett's. That, of course, really is their kind of signature style, to be honest. And, uh, as I say, this is review number three of five that you'll see across April from Stieg Beer. It's um, actually six because I do have another beer that's still sitting there. Um, so yeah, this one, um, you'll see the three card series beers. You'll also have seen Ololeo by this point, And you will also see the Cuddle Monster, which is a Hellas that they brewed with Lervig Akte Breggery from Norway. You'll see that reviewed after the, uh, the King of Hops, of course. So look forward to those reviews. And hopefully this is another very interesting one. So let's see how we get on. As always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Steve Barrett's Brewery before. No doubt there will be some more at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the video videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stigbjaret's Bravery then, on to my brewery notes once again. So as I've told you many a time, Stigbjaret's Bravery are based in Gothenburg, Jutebor, as you'd say in Swedish, on the west coast, and the company was founded by Niels Holkrantz and Richard Simonsson, and these guys own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is the Bar Kino and the Hagabion's Cafe, which can be found on Lina Gatan, to the kind of south Westish, I guess, of the main central part of uh, of Gothenburg, and these both opened back in 2007. But the building in which they're located is an independent cinema, which has a lot of interest in kind of Swedish and foreign films and things like that. So hopefully the next time I go up there, I can actually go inside and see a film and do a little bit of filming, maybe at the Hagabion's Cafe, because I filmed before at the uh, the Bar Kino, actually, which was a uh, was really quite nice. So, um, yeah, definitely need to go and check that out once again. But originally, the idea that these guys had was to um, brew some beers that they could sell on the bars, but this led to them kegging the beer and selling it on to other pubs and eventually to bottling it, which started back in November of 2014. So the original beers that they brewed were mainly English and German styles, but of course they really started to make their name when they converted to brewing the more American and hoppy styles of beer. The original head brewer that these guys had was Ole Anderson, who is now one of the owners of, uh, who, or who always was one of the owners of OO Brewing, who are also very, very respected, and it was him with his creation of the, uh, the GBG Beer Week uh, and uh, the amazing haze that really put this brewery on the map. He also has the Narangi at his own brewery as well. Um, but he was replaced for a period of time by Barnaby Struva, who was the president at, uh, at Three Floyds. I believe it was 2017, late 2017, that Ole Anderson left Stieg Berriots. Um, but these guys have now opened up another new brewery in Partihalarna. 
which is where they brew 5,000 litre batches at a time and they're also starting to work on some sour beers as well. There have been a few sours released from Steve Berriots but I've, I've noticed that they've been on the back burner a little bit over the last couple of months so it'll be interesting to see when those start up again or maybe they have just decided to kind of go for the um, the regular styles of beer to be honest. Um, but they also started selling their beers in these 440 milliliter cans as opposed to the 330 bottles that they were in before. Go and check out a few of my older Steve Berriots reviews if you want to see those but this means they can export a lot more of their beers so it's a lot more likely now that you'll find Steve Berriots beers in different beer shops across the world. They now have a brew team of Ollie Banks who used to work for Beavertown in London and also Lucas Munraid who used to work for All In Brew and one of the numerous gypsy breweries around the uh, the Gothenburg area. Um, but they open up the brewery every so often to have a bar and uh, if you want to try the Steve Berriots and OO beers, the sort of unofficial tap rooms if you like, are the Bar Kino and the Hagger Beyond's Cafe. And very recently they've just opened up a new bar in Stockholm as well. I believe it was at the end of March uh, 2020 this year that it opened up. So it's only been open about three or four weeks at this point when I'm filming the review for you. But as of April 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 60 different types of beers. So um, yeah, definitely a Swedish brewery that you want to check out. If you want a classic Swedish beer, the Amazing Haze, the GBG Beer Week are definitely worth checking out. The Narangi as well is a very, very good beer. And uh, you know, from, from OO Brewing, like I say, but pretty much keep an eye on these guys. They're always putting out some interesting hazy IPAs. I always try to make sure that I try the new beer from them every month because you know, with this brewery, you are going to get a consistently good uh, New England IPA. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Steve Berriots for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to see how you get on uh, and see what the latest goings on there are. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer, uh, Beer Advocate and Untapped pages to see all the different things that they've produced. So um, yeah, so let's get on with the tasting of this one then. Having a few brain farts in this video, I'll have to say. But um, yeah, as you can see, the artwork on this one it's quite interesting. I do have the artist's name at the bottom of the notes here. So this one is uh, Mikael Baron Dallas Delnes, um, who has made the artwork. And I think he's made the artwork for all three of the cans in this series. So I'm not sure if it was just part of a, a collaboration that they've brewed these beers, or whether it's been... Um, you know exactly what it's or exactly what the reason for this was. But yeah, the Queen of Hops, a 7% New England IPA. And um, yeah, more nice artwork from this one. So let's get this guy out and we'll see how we get on with the taste. And then I'm very curious about this because, like I said, I really did enjoy the uh, the Jack of Hops. And uh, people have been telling me, and um, they get the Swedish guys that I talked to on Instagram, Beer Hedonist, Beer Picks, um, Mr. Solberry as well, these guys, um, they've all been telling me, or wasn't just one of them that this one, I talked to them about quite a few different beers. Um, they always tell me, oh, try this one, try this one, try this one. They're really good for that, actually. I love having those um, those sources of information. Um, but, um, you know, make sure you go and check them out as well. Check out their handles as well. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's always great having people that are telling you what beers you should be trying because it is a little bit difficult to keep up with everything that's going on in Sweden. There's about 400 breweries here these days, so it is... You know, it is pretty difficult to be honest with you, but you are going to get some very good quality beer here. There's no doubt about that. So as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely kind of mid, I'd say this is sort of mid yellowy kind of colour, this one. The colour of that is really quite interesting, I have to say. Um, if I hold this up to the light, yeah, it is actually, when you put the light through it, it is a little bit more sort of orangey leaning towards the orangey end of the New England spectrum. There's a solid one third finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one, but that is just fading away to a very, very thin foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look pretty nice actually. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store. Nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. It does have a good level of haze to it, which is exactly what you would expect from a, from a New England IPA. So um, yeah, let's go for it. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. It is actually quite similar in its aroma to the Jack of Hops, so I'm not sure how much they will have changed the recipe. I mean, maybe they have just brewed it a little bit stronger. I really can't remember what the alcohol content of Jack of Hops was. I want to say it was 6.8. 6.8 is the number that's sticking in my head, because I thought this one would be a little bit higher, you know, like 7.5. 
and then the other one would be, and I think, I'm pretty sure the King of Hops is 8.2. Um, so I would have thought, because I wondered, I said in the Jack of Hops video, I wondered if they were kind of doing a thing like, um, you know, going up the scale in the same way that, um, that Treehouse do, because they brewed their Julius um, a few months back, which was a tribute to the, the Julius, actually. Um, so, yeah. I do wonder if that's the, one of the ideas that they've had with this series and obviously promoting a certain local artist and things like that too. But um, yeah, that's an interesting point to make about this beer. But yeah, this one really does smell like the... Um, it really does smell like the, like the Jack of Hops in a lot of ways. You've got that kind of um, farmhousey type thing in there as well. Um, you've got, you know, that typical sort of heady topper type thing, that, you know, woody, herbally, vegetally sort of thing. You do have a bit of a vibe of that about this beer. Um, you can also, you can also pick up a little bit of the wheaty bitiness in there. You get some of the smoother creamy notes towards the front of the nose as well. There is a wee bit of biscuit, but I would say this one is more kind of farmhousey and wheaty. The oaty notes, I think, take a bit of a back step compared to the other two. Although the more you smell of it, the more they come out. So be aware of that. This one, there is a wee touch of a biscuity sweetness to this one, like McVitie's Digestives. But overall, I think it is it is mainly a kind of farmhousey, wheaty beer. But as I say, the farmhousey notes that you get in this, they are actually quite minimal. And we found with the Jack of Hops, it did have, I'm pretty sure it did have a little bit of that in the, um, the flavour. But... Um, it's not overly prominent. The beer is actually a lot more balanced than that. If it is basically just a scale up of the Jack of Hops recipe, um, then that would kind of make sense, to be honest with you. Um, as I said to you in the last one as well, I'm curious about the hops in this because Shredder made a very good comment on my Olaleo video telling me about a few of the different hops and things that um, that went into Olaleo. I, don't, I really don't know where he finds that information right enough. Um, I'll need to find that out before I film the um, the King of Hops video, maybe. Um, but yeah, the aroma of this one is very, very nice. The malt base, the more you smell of it, the kind of more it smoothens out. The wheatiness is there, the farmhousey notes are there. I see you've also got just a little bit of an oaty creaminess too, and a wee teeny bit of biscuit. So on the hoppy side of things, nice bit of grassiness, some nice big um, floral aromaticity. Um, Yeah, some nice big floral aromaticity in there. A um, little bit of grassiness, like I said, some juicy fruity elements to the beer. Um, the fruity side of this one is definitely kind of similar. It's it's uh, a little, There's a little bit of the passion fruit in there, but mainly this one, I think, is leaning more towards the softer tropical fruits. There's maybe a wee bit of a kind of stronger peachy note in there. Um, as I say, you've got the passion fruit. You've got a wee bit of the apricot and, uh, and other things too. So, um, yeah, it's kind of... It's quite interesting that I like how this, um, I really like how this all goes together to me. It's a really nice, soft, juicy, tropical fruit kind of thing. Um, yeah, I love how this goes together. This smells really, really nice. It is very, very similar, I think, to the um, to the Jack of Hops. There's not, not much doubt in my mind about that. It just smells a little bit more boozy and it is very slightly boozier actually. So lovely juicy tropical fruits, passion fruit, little bit of a kind of peachy note in there um, and you've got some of those softer kind of apricotty, papaya type things, maybe a bit of mango as well actually. So yeah, lovely smelling beer this one but nothing overly surprising about it in terms of the aroma. So let's take a bit of time then and have, uh, or let's take a taste of this beer and see how we get on. Brain really is not working today. So yeah, this one is the Queen of Hops, part of a three-part series, the Jack, the Queen and the King of Hops from Stieg Berts Brewery in uh, Gothenburg here in Sweden. This one, an IPA, a New England IPA coming in at 7% EBV. Slanja, skull. Oh, that's nice. I like this one. I mean, I have to admit, I do, just on first impression, I think I do like this one a bit better than the Jack. Um, the sort of farmhousey elements I was talking about in the aroma, they don't come out so much in the, um, they really don't come out so much in the flavour of this one. And maybe that's one of the things is the, the less malt you have in the beer, um, obviously, and that's going to make it the lower alcohol as well, the less malt and things that you have in the beer, 
the more um, the more it's the more it's going to focus on the yeast. So I do wonder if the more malt you put in the beer, basically, does that sort of detract away from the yeast because the flavour will be more dependent on it. It's an interesting point that I've never thought about, come to think of it. So, um, yeah, that's an that, that's something that I need to think about a little bit in reviews going forward. But yeah, this is a nice, solid New England IPA. And I mean the other thing is I say that about um, I say that about the Jack of Hawks, but when I think about it compared to Amazing Haze and GBG Beer Week, those are both six point five percenters if I remember right. But then that one was six point eight. So surely, you know, I, I've never noticed that that the, the I never noticed that it might be different yeast strains, of course, but I never noticed the sort of farmhousey elements in either Amazing Haze or GBG Beer Week. Come to think of it, so that's um. You know, that's a really interesting point to make about uh, about these beers, actually. It's, yeah, I, need, I really need to think about that a little bit. It's always dangerous when I get thinking, of course. Hmm. But yeah, this one to me, this is quite a nice oily IPA. It's kind of, it's not the most oily, but it's just got that nice oily element to the wetness. Which I make, I think makes it really quite drinkable. They've got this one just right for me. This beer hits a lot of um, spots for me. But I mean, for those for other people, you might say, is this the most exciting IPA that Steve Barrett's have done? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's quite to me. It strikes me as being really very very solid. I mean, the amount of IPAs that Steve Barrett's produce, um, it is in some ways it really is quite difficult to. Um, to pick out a you know a special one. Oh, the Leo was really really good, but these guys have produced so many good New England IPAs. It really is difficult to make any to make comparisons between them now because they, you know, if you brew all of the one the kind of one style, um, you forget exactly what ones you've had. I've had so many New England IPAs from these guys over the years, and a lot of them have been good. The Muddle, um, the Stiggy Fingers. Uh, what else have I had? Oh, the Leo. Uh, I can't even think what the other ones I've had have been, but they've, you know, these guys do some really, really nice beers, um, and I think this one to me, I like this. Um, you're, as I said, you're always going to get a solid New England IPA from Steve Berrios. You can rely on them for that. But is it one of the better beers that they've done? I'm not sure, but I like this one. I do like the the more the slightly more oily. Mouthfeel that it has. I'm a big fan of the big oily beers, as you say. But um, yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down a little bit then. So yeah, straight away in the middle of the palate, you've got that nice kind of white bready base that blankets the middle of your tongue. And as you go further into the aftertaste, you can feel it smoothing out, and that's the kind of wheaty elements to the beer. The wheat gets a little bit more bitey as you go towards the back of the palate. I don't think this one's got crit, got um, any kind of pilsner malt or anything in it to give you a bit more crispness at the back. This, the, the wheat does have a bit of bitiness to it, but it's really um, quite smooth, this one, um, which is nice. I like the, the smoothness that this beer has, actually. Um, so yeah, this one's this one is quite uh, quite interesting in that regard. It's really a very very kind of smooth IP. It's not big big and thick and creamy. It's got a smoothness to it, but it's also got a nice oily, um, fruity character as well, which I think the the two of those work really well together in tandem. But yeah, as you move further forward on the palate with this one, um, you definitely get more. You can feel the oatiness on the front. You get to the, I always think the tongue is kind of split into thirds, you've got the back third, the middle third, and then the front third. The very front third is usually the fruity notes, but when you get to that border between the, the malts and the, the fruity side of things, um, you can really, that's where the oatiness kind of sits for me, the oatiness, um, this kind of creamier aspect of the oatiness just kind of sits there. There is a little bit of a kind of biscuity, McVitie's digestive kind of sweetness to this one in the very middle of the palate as well, and it, I like the way that it just sits on top of the... Um, the kind of wheaty smoothness and stuff that this beer has, and it blends in quite nicely with the um, with the sort of oaty, creamy aspects that the beer has as well. So I mean, this one, um, I really like this. This, in terms of its mouthfeel and the way the flavours go together, this one ticks a lot of boxes for me. I'm a big fan of kind of more oily leaning uh, New England IPAs. I've always been a big fan of oily beer, in uh, in general actually. So this one 
as I say, it's, beer is always subjective, bear that in mind, but this one ticks a few boxes for me. So um, yeah, let's look at the hoppy side of the beer then, I think that's the malty side of it covered quite well. So on the hoppy side of things, there's a nice little bit of, um, there is a nice little bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but it's, it's very, very minimal. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel some nice floral qualities to the beer, but they're not really spicy or anything. It just has a little bit of a kind of freshness to it, if that makes sense. Then round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and, uh, and more grassy, in my mind. Um, so I really like how that... Um, how that goes together. I mean, the, the the way that the green side of the hot, of the beer fits in with everything else, I think, is really quite good. Um, but on the front, behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one is really pretty pretty damn solid. I have to say. Yeah, I like the fruitiness that this one has. Um, it's, it's interesting because you do get a good balance between the tropical notes in this one and also a bit more of the kind of citrusy type things as well. If you go towards the back of the, the oily part of your palate, there's a wee teeny bit of a passion fruit thing there, but it really evolves to be more sort of mango-like and sort of tropical. So, I mean, there's a few hops that could be. I don't think this one's... I don't think this one's Simcoe. I'm pretty sure it's not Simcoe. I think this is most likely to be like... Um, I think it might be Idaho 7 or something, but then as I say, Shredda made that comment in the the Olaleo video where he was talking about Victoria's Secret, and of course Victoria's Secret is like the little brother, little sister of um, of the galaxy, so there could be something like that, I mean, as I say, the tro the fruity side of this beer, um, it's passion fruit, I find this one's quite a lot of mango, this has got a nice juicy sort of mango-y element to it, come to think of it, and then as you move further forward on that fruity part of the palate, you start to, you do get a wee bit of the apricotty and papaya type notes out of this beer and um, those work in really well and as you reach the very very front part of the palate I think there's a wee kind of tangerine orange sort of thing going on with this one which is very very nice um, and that's maybe one of the reasons why I like this beer so much it's got the big oily mouthfeel and it's also got a bit of an orangey quality to it as well there's a few hops that it could be with the orangey notes I'm wondering if I get a wee bit of pineapple out of this on the aftertaste as well I do think there's a wee pineapple-y element to this one as well. Um, but there's a few hops it could be, if it's orange of course, it could be Amarillo but I don't think it's quite oily enough for that. Mosaic is maybe the obvious choice but you don't have the earthiness there. Sabro is a new sort of orangey one that's uh, making its way over here into Sweden now so it could be that. Azaka is a choice as well because there's pine there's a bit of pineapple flavour in this for me and you've also got a little bit of a, an orangey quality as well so it could be Azaka it's in this. I think Azaka could well be a safe bet. Of course, you've got things like um, Waiiti Pacifica from New Zealand. You've also got the Mandarina Bavaria too, which is which is an interesting one. So yeah, there's quite a few different hops that this one uh, that this one could be. So I really like how um, how this goes together. The, um, the 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 fruity side of the beer, the big oily uh, mouthfeel that it has, the way the greens come out, and the smoothness of the malt base. And the kind of orangey, the balance between the oranges and the tropical fruits for me, that's what really sets this one apart. I mean, I do like this. I, I do like this better than the Jack, I have to say. Um, and that's just, I think, because of the, the kind of prominence of the, the orangey flavours. And that's not to say there was anything wrong with the Jack. This one, to me, I just like it better. That's it. I mean, it's, beer is always subjective. Different people like different things. I don't know about the King of Hops. Um, you know, I really don't know about the... Uh, King Pops, I could have done these beers in a sort of three, had all three and just done it, but um, that might have been an idea, but I like doing the beers separately and giving them all their own individual consideration, but this is a nice big oily, juicy and smooth um, IPA in my mind, I really like this one, so big thumbs up to Steve Berry, it's for me. I'd be curious to know your own opinions on this, because this is one, as I say, that ticks a lot of boxes for me, um, the, it's so difficult with Steve Berry, it's now because of the number of IPAs to say, is this one of their better ones, um, but they've got so many good beers at Steve Berry, so yeah, that's us cover the flavour, let's look at the mouthfeel quickly with this one then. So yeah, this one's got a lovely kind of um, this one's got a lovely 
it's definitely mid-bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. As I said, the mouthfeel, it has the smoothness you expect to the style, but it's a little bit oily as well. In terms of its hoppy bitterness, I think this beer is maybe, I think this is your standard kind of 30, maybe 40 IBUs a push. The malt base is nice and smooth. There is an element of oiliness to it as well. A wee bit of sweetness from the biscuity notes that I was talking about. The more that you drink of this, the more you get of that little McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of quality. And then you've got a lovely big kind of oily fruity character to this beer as well but overall this one was really pretty nice it ticked a lot of boxes for me and what I like personally in a New England IPA so um, so far the Queen is winning over the Jack definitely so it'll be interesting to see what the King has in store for us in uh, in a, in a couple of videos time so keep an eye out for that I'll need to decide when I'm going to review the, the King of Hops but yes this was definitely a nice second parter to this three part series so yeah check this one out try the Jack as well when you get the chance and if you can you know pick up all three and just have a go at them for yourselves and see what you think but you will see my King of Hops review in a couple of videos time but yeah let's leave it at that this one's a lovely big smooth but um, nice and oily New England IP in my mind lots of lovely orangey citrusy flavours so um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Steve Beers as well we will return to this brewery at some point very very soon and uh, yeah you'll see the king of hops video in uh, a couple of videos time thank you again for watching make sure you check out this brewery check out my social media and we'll catch you guys later Slanja, Skull, cheers